Hi everyone, I'm at a property today and I'm gonna show you how we moved everything from this mains position across to this mains position. Hi everyone, I'm on a job today where we are moving the mains position. It's a big day. Right, so this is the other side of the wall. So Jake's currently here. Jake's happy by the way, because he's got his brand new rival top on today. So he's a very happy boy. And uh, basically we're removing all of this mains position here. This is where it's gonna be drilling through to the other side of the wall. So what we're going to do is um, we've just lifted up some floor here. Uh, I'm gonna drill through from the garage side down on an angle to pop out underneath this floor. So all of this mishmash of cables here that we currently have, we're gonna get it all straightened out and we're gonna be sending the cables through the wall where it'd be neatly trunked up to the new mains position on the other side. So, and uh, we've got a few cables which are currently coming down this wall. So we have to chisel out the wall here so that we can send the cables through at high level, drill through into the garage, and they'll be trunked down to the down, uh, to the consumer there. Now we're coming 800 or 1000, it's up to you. Yeah, well let's see, well let's measure, let's measure from the other side to see where these tails are. Yeah. And we'll measure across from the other side to see where, how far along we can come from the, with, with the floor. We're trying to get our cables through as far over as possible, so we know that these cables here, these new tails, they come through dead straight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from here across to here as far as we can go where we've got access under the floor so six. 600 yeah. okay yeah if we go 600 here then that means that now if we've got 600 there then we know that we can go 600 from there across to here so i'll drill through at low level there so that'll, that'll get get us under the floor as far over this way as possible because what we want to do what we want to achieve so we look straight up and that should get us to around about where our consumer unit is going to go right here. Right, okay, so we've got my drill bit. The drill bit is just down here, it's popped through the wall, just there, which is great. So that's uh, just sent through a little pilot bit just to test and now I'll make the hole wider now. I can drill a couple more holes next to it so I can send, send these cables straight through the wall, under the floor, straight into the garage. So now I've drilled my holes down low, ready to get the cables coming through. I now need to do the same up high. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my, my trusty level here, which I'm gonna uh, mark up the wall straight up to the top. I have got a laser line that I normally use for stuff like this, but I don't have a lot of room behind me. So it's just easier, quicker just to use a, uh, a straightforward uh, spirit level. So I'm gonna basically spirit level up, uh, drill through at high level. And as long as I come out on the other side of the wall, 150 mil from the, from the ceiling, downwards as long as it's no lower than that then I'm with in, within the regulations I am going to try and get it as tight as possible to the actual ceiling because uh, the, the, the higher the better but the, the idea basically is that the holes down low and the holes up high will be in line with each other so when the consumer unit is mounted here the cables in the trunking that will look like this will it will come straight down on top and uh, up from the bottom nice and neat and tidy I want to highlight something really important here as well, which, uh, which can easily get missed. And I think this is gonna become quite a problem uh, going forward for a lot of electricians and, and, and people in general, is that obviously we're used to always thinking about electricity coming into the property, going through the consumer unit and then feeding the final circuits, uh, like your sockets and your lights and all these things. However, this property has solar, which we fitted the solar a few months ago. And um, even for us, it's, it's still, a process that we're, we're getting used to in, in houses where we have to think to ourselves that this place has solar so it's actually getting back fed from, an, uh, from a different direction so um, and that can easily catch you out not so much if you're the homeowner consumer because chances are you won't be touching the electrics um, however <laughs> or you might be but um, from an electrician's point of view we are used to thinking of the power coming into the building and feeding the circuits so therefore once we've disconnected the mains we're thinking that everything's safe, but in actual fact with solar, you need to really make sure that you are isolating the, oh, there we go. Um, we are, you're isolating the inverter, because this inverter is feeding power from the, from the solar system into the inverter. So basically it comes down from the roof in DC form, it goes into the inverter, converts it to an AC form, so it's usable in the home. It then pumps it straight back to, to the mains point, where then, feeds the consumer unit and then feeds into the final circuits being all your sockets and lights and things and anything else then goes back into the grid or it goes into the battery as well so with that being in mind 
that when you start opening up the mains, if you've got the, right here, what we've done here, we've pulled, we've isolated, we've isolated our switch here. So normally this would be the case, you isolate this main switch, it isolates everything to the property. In our case, there's more to do. So you isolate this main switch, you then must remember to then come in here because you've got to look at this as a secondary uh, set of mains basically so you need to make sure that this is isolated and the, the DCs are off as well just for precaution so this is the this is the one especially this one that back feeds back to back to the mains connections that we're, we're dealing with over here and on the other side of the wall so that is something really really important um, for electricians to get into their mindset and always be conscious that as renewable energy starts to come in more and more nowadays we really need to be thinking about these things because um, because obviously I did my apprenticeship back in 2000 and I'm a, I'm, I'm a trained solar engineer and uh, we've been doing solar systems recent, uh, a lot of them recently. However, there's still a lot of houses without it. So there's going to be a big sort of swap over from sort of an, an older mind, trained mindset to sort of a newer one as, the, uh, as more solar comes in and more people are, are dealing with it. So something good to be mindful of there. All right, so we've got Jake on the scene. So what we're going to be doing here is obviously because we're going to be popping through here we're going to excavate some of this wall out here so that we can the cables that run up we can pull them out the wall get them away so that when i drill through from the other side of the wall that means that i'll pop through and i won't come through any of the cables here because the, the angle of the the drill from the other side is going to be low and it's going to be coming up high on this side so i can't do it from this side because i won't get the angle on the drill to all right so i'm just in the process of I'll pull in these cables back here. These ones in the conduit, excuse the drilling, that's Jake on the other side. But basically, we're gonna, we're going to get rid of these conduits here, and we're gonna put a trunk in across here, so then it'll trunk down to our new board here. So these conduits currently, the, the cables come down, they drill through the wall as existing and, and, and feed through. So all this will pull back, chop these, chop these off to high level, and then trunk straight across and into our new board here. Right, moment of truth, I've just drilled through. I've just drilled through it, yeah? How's it, how's it looking? You, oh, you said I gotta come over a bit. Let's see, let's see where I came through. We're out of the chase, that's right. Right, the chase. Oh, okay, yeah, we could do with a, that's why we do a tester one. So we're over here. All right, so I need to come over a bit and ideally you wanna go higher as well. Okay. Right, we tried again and this time, success. I can't see you. Right down there. Right up there, perfect. Perfect, perfect. You've always got to be careful what you might come across in these environments, sir. But look at this, a lovely little mouse trap there. Also a nice little foot trap for electricians to, to stand on as well, so I'm glad I spotted this. We've got some single insulated cables here coming through like an insulation board. It's the, it's the, this is the garage room, so above here is a bedroom. So they put some of the Celatex type insulation in, Kingspan, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, basically insulated material here. And um, there's going to be, yeah, so because we've got single insulated cables, um, I'm imagining they're going to be coming straight through the ceiling. Um, I could try and get to where they actually go to, but the problem is it's all laminate floors up above. Customer doesn't want any floors lifted, understandably, so we're kind of governed by what we've got. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some some uh, 20 mil or 25 mil flexible conduit, push it straight up and get it up as far as we can up through here. And then that will then go into our trunking, which is gonna run across this way. And um, that will be making the best of our of our situation of with a lot of these things is circumstantial to whatever we can do because of the actual property type or as far as their client will allow us to go with it so it's it's, it's a whole mix and blend of those things and obviously we always got to try as electricians trying to do the best we can with any scenario that we have so that for me there's a few different variations there but that for me is going to be the best one on on this job right i've marked up my consuming unit position here and uh, ready for the cables to come up and down and 
giving it a level up. And excuse me with the hands a minute, I'm trying to hold a camera while I do this. But basically, I've knocked out the, the back of the board here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring the cables through the back of the board. Rather than trying to bring them through on the top and have a head of a time, these are, they've got these knockouts here. Um, which are great in some scenarios, but in others, not very, not very helpful for, uh, and not so easy for stuff like this. So what I'm actually, depending on how you're going to do it, but what I like doing is I like having the trunking going, but in straight onto the top of the consume unit. And so it's a nice, neat finish. So I'm going to take advantage of this board as it is a dot and dab wall. I'm going to take a cut out of the wall here, which is going to be behind the trunking. So it won't be seen. These cables will sit in that in, in the plastic trunk in and uh, basically the cables will then go down inside the wall. Uh, it's technically not inside the wall, but you know, behind the, the into the plasterboard um, as far back as the masonry and then they'll pop through these holes here. So the, the cables will come directly through the back of the consumer unit here like this. So and the same with the cables coming up as well. So that way when I get a nice, I'll get a nice finish on it then because I'll have the trunking that comes up the trunk that comes down uh, because when you take out these holes in the top and bottom you end up having to spread them out put, put uh, what we call uh, stuffing glands on them and uh, basically they end up being quite separated and it's just nice to be able to hide all the cables as much as possible without having anything on show uh, there are other ways of running a trunking across horizontally I don't really like that so I'm gonna stick with the method I've got for, on this one and uh, yeah go from there So we've got the board on the wall, nice and leveled, lovely. And what I've done here is uh, now getting a, into a position now where I can trunk up to it. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is so you can see here this is where I uh, where I took the, the wall out here so I can feed the cables down behind here like that to get the cables straight in and they're gonna be covered in some some of this trunk in here which is gonna go on the on the wall, so that'll cover over this whole area here, so you, you won't see any of this, it'll be all covered up. The cables will come down, in behind here, straight into the consume unit, great. And the same from this side of things coming upwards as well. Give it all. We are getting there piece by piece. I've got a couple of the lids on now. Uh, I wanted to show you this, take a look up here. So like I said to you earlier, I needed to get some uh, some flexible conduit on here. Um, this this piece in here has to stay that there is a beam in there. So um, it's a really awkward situation to be in because I need to try and get these cables in here. Uh, they are doubly insulated in the position they're in, they're, they're, they're fine being where they are, but I just wanted to get something on these ones to make them better. And then uh, I think it was this one, that, yeah, this is the one that's single insulated. So I've got that all the way up in going into here and it's then mechanically protected coming down you know through here and then into this uh once the lid's on it's all going to be all cushy in there so yeah i've got these bits done now and what i've also done is here's the lid and what i've done with this this is going to go up to here like this and with a bit of luck with some fine tuning and a bit of a bit of this and a bit of that that's going to sit on there nice and neat is the idea so what i did there um, i used a 25 mil hole saw and uh, which is, I'll show you just so you can uh, see exactly what it is. This is a 25 mil hole saw drill bit here. And um, sent that in, I, I measured out where all the notches were and then I then sent it in and into each of these. And then what I've done is then I've, it need, needs a bit more filing yet, but I've just filed these edges off straight because they were completely round going round and, and had corners on here. So what I've been doing is, in fact, there's a little bit left on that one, but basically what I've been doing is filing them flat so that when it goes on here, it kind of, it's gonna sit on a bit like this with a bit of luck. Right, so we've got most of the cables into the consumer unit now. So as you can see, it's a busy old board we're gonna have here and it's not gonna be absolutely perfect in terms of, uh, I know some of you guys commented on, on the wiring from uh, the rewire that we did uh, where, the, where we had the meter uh, polarity reverse. Um, it's not gonna, <laughs> I can tell you now, it's not gonna be quite like that. We're gonna get them as tidy as possible. However, when you've got cables coming in from all different directions, all different lengths, um, then, the, then the planning of it is, we, we still obviously try and get it as good as we can, but some of it where it is predetermined by uh, what cables we've got coming in where and, and all the rest of it. Some of these cables might just be long enough to, to just about reach by going, coming in one entry, 
rather than another, which means that sometimes the cables will end up having to cross over, but it's better than having put an extra uh, connections on to extend cables and things like that. So the less connections we have, the better. But um, yeah, this has gone well up here. So we've got our, we've got our uh, flexi uh, conduits going in, nice and neat, which is all good. And uh, I've got to get some lid on this one. Okay, it's been a, it's been a bit tricky. We've had a couple of uh, cables that, because you, some of these have more than one cable in on the on the circuit breakers. Some have multiple, some only have one. Uh, it, it does slow things down a little bit as you're identifying them, but we've got all our all our markings on here, so we're just we're just running through it now. Everything else is all ready. Um, literally, it's ready. Once all this is connected, we're ready to get powered up. Um, <clears throat> I'm going through doing my checks as I go. I'm making sure that socket circuits are a ring and making sure that the insulation resistances are, are good as we go. Uh, we have already tested uh, the circuits anyway, but it's just good as we're putting them back in to singly test them again as they're going in. And then once it's all back in uh, uh, and together, we will be doing our earth test as well. So all is good, but I am concerned about the daylight starting to fade now. We have uh, torchlight and things, so we're we're okay. And we are electricians, it's nothing we're not used to. But yeah, it's, it's going good, but we're, it, there's pressure here, but we are, we are going in the right direction. Okay, guys, it looks worse than what it is. What's actually happened here, uh, it looks like I'm here at midnight. It's not the case. What's actually happened here is uh, there's a, a fault on the lighting circuit, which we knew about anyway. Uh, so we've left it disconnected because we've got uh, basically a dead short on it. So uh, it's just doing the garage lights and a couple of other bits uh, in the house. So. Um, we're actually in the middle of doing some renovation work in this property anyway, so that will get sorted out with the next stage of the job. But here we go. Uh, we are down to, because we've had all the power off all day, we've rinsed through all of our uh, batteries from our drills. And uh, yeah, we're, we're currently just down to my last light working now, which is on my on my iPhone. But it's, it's all that's required at this point because we managed to get all the main stuff done. But here we go. Here's the board in here right now. So I'm going to get this put back together, just the lid on. All the labeling still needs doing. I've got the cover here. The labeling still needs doing, but I'm going to do that when we've got some decent daylight hours as we've rolled into the evening. But um, I've got my circuits labeled up here temporarily. And when I come back, this will all be labeled up nice and neat. And uh, we've done our earth checks on all the circuits and proven all of our circuits, gone around the house and turned them on one by one. And uh, so all is good from that point of view. So um, yeah, I will uh, just get this board back together and then call it a day. So I've revisited in the daytime now, just to give you, uh, just to show you exactly how it's all gone. It's all labeled up now. Everything's all complete and finished. Everything's nice and tidy and tested. So this is the final product in the daylight. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, leave your comments down below and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.